All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So in this one, we're going to be taking a look at different draft targets for the New York Jets at the cornerback position. And of course, we're going to be splitting it up all throughout the draft. So two guys that could realistically be there in the first round of pick number 23, two guys that'll be more middle round guys, two to rounds two to three. And then of course, two, I guess, sleepers that'll go in rounds four to seven that the Jets could target. So with that being said, let's jump in. So the first player on the list I could definitely see happening. It's cornerback from Northwestern, Greg Newsom. Six foot one, one ninety. Greg Newsom is a perfect system fit for what Robert Sala wants to accomplish on the defensive side of the football. Right? We all know he's bringing over the cover four, cover three system. You look at what Newsom did in college in zone coverage. He excelled. I would say that's a top three top two trait that Newsom will be bringing to an NFL team, right? Coverage in zone, production in zone coverage, great size, confident player. He will, he's not going to, uh, going to be backing down from challenges. He's not afraid of anything. His closing speed is great, which kind of goes hand in hand with his production in zone coverage, right? Is, is just his overall ability to recognize what's happening and to close on plays, right? So overall, Greg Newsom is a really popular player at this portion of the first round. I could see him going to Chicago at spot number 20. Maybe the Arizona Cardinals earlier in the first round too, like that middle first round. I think... I, I feel like that could be a reach though, but definitely keep your eyes on the Bears because they lost Kyle Fuller or they released Kyle Fuller to, uh, because they couldn't afford him. So Greg Newsom to Chicago, maybe Tennessee, but if he gets past those two teams, I could definitely see him being the pick for the New York Jets at 23. Next up is a player that was considered at one point in time a top 10 lock. Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech. Okay, now Caleb Farley's coming in at six foot two, two hundred pounds. He's a great system fit, much like Greg Newsom. He's fantastic in zone coverage because of the length, the size, the speed, the ability to move an open field. Right, always knowing where to be. The ball skills are tremendous as well. Uh, just Farley overall as a as an on the field prospect is tremendous. Right, if Denver would have taken him at spot number nine, that would have been a great pick. If Dallas takes him at ten, great pick. But we have the injury. The injury concerns are real. They are scaring teams off. The back issues, the surgeries. The rumor right now is that Caleb Farley is going to fall in this draft. The question is how far. We've seen stuff with him still going mid first round. We've seen stuff with him going late first round. We've seen stuff, uh, you know, we've seen mock drafts with him going in early round two, right? Uh, as a, Just as an overall early day two pick. We'll see what happens on draft night, but all I can say is this. When we're looking at the Jets cornerback room currently, it's young, it's thin. We don't have tons of talent there. I like Bless Austin, I like Bryce Hall, but it's not a stacked unit on the team, right? It, it's definitely not a uh, not a not a position of strength right now. I think if Farley's on the board at 23 and the medicals check out, and I'm Robert Saul, I'm sitting there. We already picked a quarterback at spot number two, presumably Zach Wilson, so we have that position figured out. We're, we, this is an extra first round pick we got from Seattle. We can afford to take a swing on a guy in Caleb Farley. It could be a home run with the injuries. That's definitely a question mark. We could swing and miss, but the upside is there. The size, the speed, like I said, overall, Caleb Farley is a fantastic prospect. It's just the injury. So if the Jets can get over that, I could see him being the pick at 23. Next up, some middle round guys, right? These are some players that I can see going in rounds two to rounds three. And the first one on the board is Asante Samuel Jr. out of Florida State. Five foot 10, 185. Asante Samuel is physical. He's confident. He's great in man coverage. He's played on the outside. He's great in short passing situations. I think Asante Samuel translates more with the Jets as a nickel corner, right? As that slot cornerback position. A position that, quite frankly, the team hasn't really addressed in the least. Brian Poole is still out there. He is still out there on the on the open market, and he's one of the best slot corners in the entire league. We haven't prioritized him, right? He's coming off of a pretty good season. Kwan Williams was another candidate. He re-signed, so he's off the market. So if the Jets want to address this nickel cornerback position through the draft, as opposed to signing a Brian Poole, Asante Samuel is your guy because you don't have to you don't have to spend the second overall pick on him, the 23rd overall pick. He's probably going to be there at spot number 34. I doubt he slips to round three just because of the, the overall need for cornerbacks, although it's a deep draft. But I think Asante Samuel, he would come in and be a great fit. You just look at what he does, again, in man coverage, short passing situations, and just play recognition, just awareness, overall awareness. I think you take that, you match it with his quick feet as well. Asante Samuel would be a great overall pick. 
although he's not the sexy, flashy, number one starting outside corner that maybe a Greg Newsom could be or a Caleb Farley. So I think at the end of the day, Samuel's an intriguing player, but definitely worth a middle round pick, rounds two to three. Next up, one of my favorite players in the entire draft, corner from Syracuse, Ifatu Melon Fonwu. Six foot two, 210 pounds. Melon Fonwu is just a physical specimen at the end of the day. Speed, size, length. That's great. He's fantastic in zone coverage. He's a really, really solid tackler. I mean, he's not afraid to tackle. He's not afraid to come up and make a huge hit. Uh, the upside is there as well with Melon Fonwu because of the just the overall physical skill set. The only drawback, and of course, this isn't a negative on Melon Fonwu at all. It's really just a negative as far as the New York Jets' interest in Melon Fonwu is concerned. I think he's going to have a lot of teams interested in drafting him, right? In the second round. So I don't... I just don't know if he's going to be there in round three. He could, right? He could. He's definitely not being talked about as much as maybe a Tyson Campbell out of Georgia and Eric Stokes out of Georgia, some of these other guys. But I think Melon Fonu is a perfect fit for Detroit, for Green Bay, for Buffalo, and the Jets. So it'll be interesting if the Jets want to invest the 34th overall pick in Melon Fonu. It, it would be considered a reach, but I still think he would come in and be a nice, productive player for the team. So all in all, I really, really like Ifatu. So moving on to the later rounds here, we have cornerback from Ohio State, Sean Wade. Six foot, 195. At one point in time, Sean Wade was considered a first round pick, right? You look at what he did in 2019 in that loaded Ohio State defense, and you're like, Sean Wade has the potential to become a star. Long story short, he took the next step in 2020 as that, out, that starting outside corner and didn't really live up to the hype. He's productive, he has good size, he has good speed, he has good technique. Everything about Sean Wade is really, really good, but he let a lot of people down this season. He had, he had a couple really bad games, and uh, because of that, his stock is falling. Now, I think the main issue here with Sean Wade isn't that he sucks, isn't that he's just, you know, a bad cornerback prospect, because we've seen him make plays, we've seen him lock up solid, solid wide receivers at the college level, I think the problem with Sean Wade was a lot of pressure early, and a lot of thinking, right, you're thinking during the play, you're thinking about this, you're thinking about that, as opposed to just playing, right, where when you're in the slot, it's more so just kind of read and react type of stuff, so I think at the end of the day, Sean Wade could be that late round steal, just that I don't really think Sean Wade's ever going to be the best cornerback in the league or a top five corner, but I think in rounds four, right, if he falls to rounds four or five, because I mean, let's face it, we've seen his stock just plummet. Again, he was considered a first round pick before the season started. It seemed like month by month by month by month, it was rounds one to rounds two, rounds three. He hung there for a little bit. Now it's like rounds four and five. At the end of the day, man, I, I still really like Sean Wade. Next up is another one of my favorite corners in this draft. It's Keith Taylor from Washington, six foot two, one ninety. I personally feel like Keith Taylor has been underrated throughout the course of this entire draft process. I mean, I get it that this class is loaded with corners. You can get starting caliber guys anywhere from rounds one through four, depending on what team you're talking about, obviously. But Keith Taylor, to me, has great size, great speed. He has versatility because he's played in man and zone coverage. And and, and, he, and honestly, he's done relatively well in both. Um, I, I look at his instincts, right? And I know there's some concerns over what he did in Washington in zone coverage. But I think when you take the, take those instincts, when you take his ability to tackle and wrap up an open field, he projects pretty well into the Robert Sala defense. Um, really good man coverage. I think the upside is there. He was a senior bowl pr uh, practice standout. I felt like after that week, he was definitely going to be like a high round three, like like a middle, like high to middle, middle round three guy. But from everything that we're hearing, everything that we're seeing, all the rumors are pointing to Keith Taylor going in rounds four to five. And I just feel like it's a little low. So for me, if I'm Robert Sala and say we go, you know, Elijah Vera Tucker, we go Tevin Jenkins in the first round, round two rolls up. We go Wyatt Davis, something like that. We go Pat Fryermuth from Penn State, Jabril Cox from LSU, and we just continue to pass on corners, continue to pass on corners, and round four hits, and Keith Taylor's on the board. I I'm turning in the pick. So I really, really like Taylor, and I feel like all of these guys have their, for sure, pros and cons, but all of them at the end of the day would be good value picks for, you know, 
uh, the rounds that we're talking about here. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Which corners are you looking at? I know we, of course, we didn't talk about all of them. Again, it is a really, really deep class. Shamar Jean Charles is another guy, like a later round sleeper. Uh, Marco Wilson from Florida. There's tons of really, really, really good corners, and it's uh, definitely intriguing. So anyway, I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Jets. Thank you.